Are your prints off center or have you lost some of your build volume? All because your nozzle doesn't line up with the corner of the bed. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to fix it. If you've modified your 3D printer, and if you're watching this channel, there's a good chance you have, you'll see that some mods move the nozzle out of its factory position, and that means when you home, it no longer lines up with the corner of the bed. Sometimes this is harmless, but other times it has implications, such as your printed parts not being aligned in the center of the bed, or worse still, losing print volume because the nozzle can no longer reach all parts of the bed. A minor example of this was seen when I fitted the Hero Me Gen 5 cooling duct. As it uses a universal system, everything is spaced out 6mm to make room for an adapter. And because of that, the nozzle no longer lines up when homing, and 6mm of Y volume was lost. 6mm is not much, but other mods have been much worse than this. Such as when I fitted an E3D Titan Aero, or a Hamera to my Ender 3, both of which had bulky extruders that sat a long way out from the factory position. Today, we're gonna to go through several ways to fix this, both physical as well as software, so you can get the most out of your 3D printer. We're gonna start with the simplest, which is adjusting the position of the end stops. On many 3D printers, such as this Artillery 3D X1, the end stops are mounted in a way that lets them slide back and forth. Therefore, we can make adjustments, which we're about to do for the Ender 5, which has movable end stop mounts for X as well as Y. For the X axis, you can see that when I manually pull the print head until it reaches the micro switch, it's hanging over the edge of the bed. Only a small amount, but it means my print won't be centered. Fortunately, this is a really easy fix. We simply unplug the end stop, loosen the bolt on top, and slide the end stop into a better position, in my case, moving it to the left. After tightening it up and rerunning the test, we can see that the nozzle is now a couple of mils inside the border, so with the x-axis fixed, we need to make sure we remember to plug the end stop back in. On many printers, such as the Ender 3, the x-axis end stop is rigidly mounted, so it may be necessary to design a replacement part to position it slightly differently and solve your problem. So onto the y-axis, and once again the mount is adjustable, but it's already sitting at the back, and that has a nozzle sitting in around 10 millimeters from the edge. As you can see, the switch is already as far back as it will go, so it's gonna require some surgery. After removing the acrylic mounting plate from the printer, I used a Dremel to make a couple of alterations. The first was to elongate the mounting hole, and the second was to trim off the rear section of the plate. Sitting on the bench, it doesn't look that pretty, but once it's mounted on the machine, you'd be hard pressed to tell any modification had taken place. Repeating the test, we can see that the Y axis does go further back, not quite to the edge, but we've gained around five millimeters in print volume, and that's a good thing. On the end of five, this was a little bit of trouble, but remember on most printers, it's gonna be pretty straightforward to slide the Y axis end stop back and forth. So adjusting the end stop positions may give us a small amount of wiggle room, depending on the printer but sometimes what we need is more drastic. On an i3 style printer, also known as a bed slinger, where the Y axis moves forward and back, we actually have a lot more room for improvement and all we need is a few spare nuts and bolts. So here is the guts of the Y axis moving parts for an i3 style frame, in this case an Ender 3. And the plan is to move the entire Y axis subassembly back and forth to correct the position where the nozzle sits when we're homing. Typically, the rail that the Y axis moves along is rigidly mounted to the bottom of the frame using four M5 bolts. So it really should be impossible to adjust this part, but if we remove them, we can find a way to get it done. Option one is to slide the Y rail a fixed distance and only reinsert two of the bolts. This is not a particularly flexible solution, but it does give us leeway to move the bed either forward or back 20 millimeters, depending on the specific printer. It's probably more rigid than you might expect, and that's because this rail is mounted in a machine section. There's wobble before we use any bolts, but once they're in place, and even with only two, the frame becomes quite rigid. Option two is to use shorter M5 bolts with a T-nut to lock everything in place. 
So there might be variation from printer to printer, but on an Ender 3, the right hardware for me was M5 by 35 millimeter bolts, two washers, and an M5 T-nut. We put our new bolts up through the bottom of the frame, put the T-nuts in place, and then slide the wire rail into position. As you can see, this lets us position it pretty much anywhere we need, which means we can get the nozzle perfectly aligned with the bed. Once we have the correct position, we can turn the printer on its side and tighten the M5 bolts. And just like before, our frame will be plenty rigid, despite not using any of the original threaded holes on the wire rail. If we look on the underside of the frame, this combination of hardware leaves the screw cap sitting slightly proud of the frame, but the feet on the printer stick out further than that, so I can't really see this being a problem. So on this style of printer, we should be able to position the bed exactly where we need it. So that's our physical fixes done, but what if your printer doesn't have this type of adjustment? Or maybe the adjustment required is just too large, like the pellet extruder I fitted when trying to print with my recycled plastic shreds. Well, in these cases, we still have further options by adjusting the firmware settings. On the Tornado with the pellet extruder, if we home the printer, we can see that the nozzle is sitting way off the corner of the print area. Looking underneath, we can see that not only is it off the wham band flex plate, but it's also clear of the glass frame. Worst of all is that in this position, the printer believes it's at 000, which should be the lower left hand corner of the printable area. The worst case is that if we position anything in that front section of the printer, it's going to be printing in mid-air. The best case is that parts position in the middle won't be centered on the build plate. To adjust for this in the firmware, we're going to home the machine, go to motion, move axis, and then for the X axis followed by the Y, we're going to manually move the print head until we're happy it's in line with the corner of the printing area. I'm now repeating the exact same procedure, except this time for the Y axis. And this time I need to move it in finer increments to get it into the correct position. Once I'm confident the nozzle is in the corner of the print area, I can go back to the main status screen and look at the measurements for X and Y. In my case, I had to move the nozzle 20 for X and 30 for Y. In configuration.h of Marlin, we can update our X min position and our Y min position to include these numbers. And if your nozzle was hanging off the edge of the bed like mine, you're going to put a minus in front of them. After compiling the firmware and flashing it to the printer, we can auto home and at first it seems like everything is the same. Except now when we inspect the LCD, we can see that the machine knows it's minus 20 and minus 30 from the nozzle being in the corner of the print area. And if we ask the printer to move to 00, zero the nozzle is now in the corner of the bed. If the position of your hot end has changed this much, it's worth doing a second test, where we use the LCD to move the bed as far forward as it will go until there's going to be a collision. In my case, that wasn't obvious, because the roller was going to hit my grounding strap on the underside, my safe limit being 260mm for the Y axis. Therefore, in the firmware, I updated my Y bed size to 260mm. I also updated the dimensions in the slicer, and of course that means giving up some Y volume, but at least now I know that everything is aligned and I have no chance of collisions. Now that particular method is what's used on this BQBX, and if we manually home the machine, we'll see that the nozzle is sitting a fair way over the edge of the bed. But not everyone has access to the firmware source. Luckily, there's still one more option using M206 G code. By default, the line no workspace offsets is commented out in configuration underscore adv.h. So unless the person who compiled your firmware changed this, M206 will give you the option to move your print area relative to the original position. Our specific printer for this example is the Secret SK Go, which like the Ender 5, homes in the back corner. And as you can see, the nozzle is sitting clear of the bed, around 15mm to be exact in the Y direction. I verified this by doing manual movements until it was in the position I wanted, and then I looked at the documentation for the G-code M206. The important thing to know here is that whatever offset value you enter will be subtracted from the original position. So if we want to move our printing area to the left, we need to enter M206 
x10 and that will subtract 10 millimeters from the original coordinates. In my case, I want to shuffle everything up 15 millimeters, so I'm going to enter m206 y minus 15. It seems counterintuitive, but that did the job, and you can always trial and error and verify your settings are accurate by first homing the machine and asking it to move to 0, 0. If the nozzle lines up with the corner of the print area, then your job is done. When you're done, make sure you send an M500 to save your values to the EEPROM or click on store settings from the configuration LCD menu. That's it from me and hopefully one of these four methods will be the right fix for you so you can use the full extents of your 3D printer's build area. If one of these is just what you needed or you have another method that I haven't included here, please let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.